Okay, so I want to be upfront about this. This is not going to be a review in the traditional sense where I finish something and then judge it as a whole afterwards. Because I didn't actually finish reading The Red Knight, right here, ooh. Uh, I got around 60% of the way through, and I realized that I was just really bored with it, and I couldn't go on. And I'll get some more into the reasons why in a minute, but just keep in mind that everything I say here is really only judging the first two-thirds of the book. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So talk about wasted potential. When The Red Knight started off, I thought it was really good. I thought it had a neat setup. It was maybe not the most unique setting or the most unique character cast, but it was clearly, it, it had some passion behind it, and it looked like it was going somewhere. But then, as time went on, I realized that very little was actually happening. It, it was kind of just, okay, there's a siege at this abbey, and there's some other guys that are around doing stuff. And that was... that was kind of it. So the plot to this is pretty simple, or at least the setup to it is. Uh, there's a band of mercenaries, which are led by a guy who doesn't want to give out his real name, he just calls himself the Red Knight, and in the narration he's also sometimes referred to as the Captain. And then they're hired by this nun to protect her abbey and the town around it from these creatures that are coming out of this place called the Wild. And the Wild is, well, basically just an area where human civilization has not uh, taken root yet. It's just overgrown forests and shit, and there's really powerful magic there. There are tons of creatures out there, like uh, things called boglins, which are basically goblins. Uh, then there's also like trolls. Uh, there's humans that live out there, but they're mostly tribal folks that occasionally come out and raid. And so, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, we need protection from them. Uh, but, uh, after a little while there, they realize, oh shit, there's a giant-ass army in the wilds that's coming to take us, and then they're under a siege. Uh, they, they get under a siege pretty early on in the book, actually, and even by the point I was at, the siege was still ongoing. Uh, and meanwhile, there's a whole bunch of other characters which it keeps cutting to, and... Well, I hate to repeat myself, but they are kind of just doing stuff, you know? Some of them are also involved again in the fight against the Wild in some way, but most of them are not directly connected to the conflict uh, at the Abbey, which is called Lysen Karak. Okay, so before I get into anything else, I kind of want to talk about the setting here. Now, this setting is kind of interesting. I, I like what they could do with it, but this book doesn't really do all that much with it, at least not the parts that I read. Because what it is, is it's our world, except magic exists, and so a lot of the countries are different, and uh, apparently Jesus was still a thing, so Christianity is still a thing, and so that's why, you know, you have nuns and priests and abbeys and all that, uh, but at the same time, it's a little bit different, and so that's, that's kind of interesting. Like, it's still alien enough that I don't feel like it's a cop-out, like something like Blood Rose Rebellion was, but it's also familiar enough that I can look at it and say, oh, that's kind of interesting how our world might have turned out differently. And uh, it's also pretty easy to tell uh, what countries they're talking about. Like, the majority of this takes place on Alba, which is pretty clearly a bastardization of Albion, which is Great Britain. And then there's also other countries like Gaul, which is France, and Morea, which is Spain, and the Empire, that's just the Holy Roman Empire. Like, it's not hard to figure out what's going on. And so, I think that's kind of interesting. And I also like uh, the idea of the wild. You know, it's this place up north, which has all this powerful magic and everything, and the humans built a wall to try and keep it out, uh, but it's not quite working that well, and now there's a force from beyond the wall that's coming to take them. And I, I know that saying that is going to make a lot of people think of Game of Thrones, but I think it's different enough that I, it, it works pretty well. It's not a ripoff. Uh, and the main reason for that is that in Game of Thrones, uh, you know, you do have the White Walkers, aka the others, that are going to come south and kill everybody, but before that, you also have the Wildlings that are trying to escape, and so they're the main threat at first. They're the ones that are attacking, and the the humans of the Night's Watch have to fight them off. 
Whereas in this, in The Red Knight, the creatures and the magical threat from beyond the wall is coming, yes, but there are also humans that are working with it rather than fleeing from it. And I already mentioned the uh, Outwallers, who are the tribal people that, you know, come out and raid and everything, and they're just... I, I guess you'd call them uncivilized, but, you know, and in that sense, they're pretty similar to the Wildlings, yes. Uh, but then there's also these guys called the Jacks, and they're actually pretty interesting, but they barely got any focus, so they didn't really add much. But uh, the Jacks are basically just rebels against the current order. You know, they don't like that there are kings and lords that, well, rule over everything, and so they're trying to fight against that. They seem kind of like medieval anarchists, and I thought, oh, that, that's pretty cool. And they, they also hide out beyond the wall and then come out and, like, attack soldiers and stuff and then run back into the wild, and so they're allying with these guys. But again, they don't really spend time on that, so I couldn't really get into it. But the setting aside, really the biggest issue with this book for me was that it started off feeling like it was going to be a heroic fantasy. You know, a, a relatively small-scale, like, uh, low magic or s moderate magic uh, setting where the stakes of the story are more about this one town or this one region rather than the whole world or the whole kingdom. And as you see the army is really huge and you realize what the villain is planning on doing, you realize, okay, it's epic fantasy where, you know, the stakes are much higher. And I don't have a problem with it trying to transition into that, but it feels like the story wants to feel as though it's epic fantasy without actually being epic fantasy. What I mean by that is, well, like I said before, there's a huge character cast, and most of them feel like they don't need to be there. You know, there's all these different guys from all over Alba, and for the most part, their characters just boil down to, yeah, this guy's a knight, and he's super badass, and he likes to fight. And this other guy's also a knight, and he's also super badass, and he also likes to fight. And this guy is a merchant, and he's just kind of traveling at the moment, but, you know, he's... Uh, it's just, it just goes on and on and on, and I couldn't see the point to any of it. Like, if there's an epic fantasy which takes place over in a, an entire giant empire or an entire continent, it makes sense to have characters from all those different areas, and they're viewing things from different perspectives, and they all have their own missions and their own goals, and that's fine, I get it. But in this case, the characters didn't really feel like they had their own missions or their own goals, and they also all kind of blended together. And so it feels like this was originally a heroic fantasy, which is trying to make itself seem like an epic fantasy by just having all that stuff there. And also, like, okay, it's a really long book as well. This copy is, uh, do, 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 let me check, it's 600 and... Uh, it's about 650 pages. So, yeah, that's a really long, long book. And it feels like it's long just because, well, epic fantasy is supposed to be long, so we, we gotta add stuff. And so, yeah, I think this could have worked well as a smaller scale heroic fantasy story, where it really just focused on the Red Knight, but trying to make it much bigger and more epic is doing it a huge disservice. And so that, that dissonance between those two ideas I mean, it really killed it for me, because there was all that stuff with characters that I just don't care about, and a lot of battles and stuff that I couldn't quite get into, and it just made me realize that I was bored. Like, I didn't want to keep reading. Speaking of battles, those are actually pretty good for the most part. Now, I just complained about them a little, but that's mostly because, like, I couldn't get into them because a lot of the characters weren't that good. But, when I could get into them, they were really fucking good, okay? Like, they're very well written, they're, uh, pretty realistic, I guess? M like, okay, maybe not totally realistic, but they're low magic is the thing, so it's mostly just like, okay, dudes in armor beating the shit out of each other. And I... I, I like that, honestly. It gives everything a more, uh, gritty feeling. And, again, it... The action is really uh, flowing. There we go, I couldn't think of the word. It flows really well, and you do get a sense of the desperation of what's going on and the exhaustion that a lot of the characters are feeling, and you understand that, like, okay, if they don't do this right, a lot of people are going to die. And so, when I could get into the action scenes, they were great. I just wish that they... Well, I just wish that they were in a better book. 
Yeah, I don't mean to sound too snarky with that, because, like, at the end of the day, this book isn't terrible. It's really not even bad. I just couldn't finish it because I was bored. Something else that kind of bothered me was the magic, and this is also kind of the same idea as the heroic versus epic fantasy thing, where the magic seems to be going for kind of a soft magic system feel, where, like, you don't know all that much about how it works, and so when you see it, it's, it's supposed to feel more mysterious and dangerous. And at first I was okay with that. But then, when the characters are talking about it, and when they're mentioning how it works, it feels like they understand a lot about it. They f it feels like, to them, it's a pretty hard system, and they, it, you know, has clearly defined rules. But the issue is that the audience is never made privy to how those rules work, or rather were given very little information, so I was never quite sure how it worked, and... I mean, again, maybe they explain this later, like, maybe they explain it in the latter part of the book, or uh, in the later books in the series, because this is part of a series, but... I mean, I, could, I couldn't get into it at the time, and it was treating me like I should know what's going on, but at the same time it's treating me like it wants me to be kind of in awe of this mysterious magical force, and I mean, you really can't do it both. You really can't do both of those. You, you gotta pick one. I know I haven't talked much about the characters in this so far, and that's because, I mean, most of them just aren't that interesting. Like I said, it kind of just boils down to this guy's a knight, and he's badass and likes to fight, and this other guy's also badass and likes to fight. And I mean, they all have a little bit of personality, I'll give them that much. Like, none of them are total blank slates, but they just blend together too much. And, like, the Red Knight himself, uh, we, we get an inkling of what his past is like, but this book is really banking on him being a mysterious figure, while also being this huge badass. And, like, to the point where it doesn't even give us his real name until, like, halfway through the book. Uh, it's Gabriel, by the way. That, that might seem like a spoiler, but it, it's really not. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, the fact that they don't tell us his name feels more like a gimmick than anything. Like, it, do it doesn't add anything to it. Uh, but anyways, it's just... It, it feels... Uh, I don't know, edgy, I guess? Like, it feels like the Red Knight is almost a self-insert character, because, again, he's this huge mega badass who almost always wins, he's a genius, and he's a veteran of many, many battles, and he's only 20 years old. Which is a little weird, like, that is stretching my disbelief a bit. If he, if he had been, like, 25, 26, then I would have found that easier to believe, but eh, whatever, whatever. The point is, it, he just feels a little too Mary Sue-ish, and he's not interesting enough to really make up for that. And uh, I think the only character that I... I wouldn't say I was getting into him, but I thought he was interesting, was this uh, French knight who was convinced that an angel was protecting him, and he was convinced that he was the greatest knight in the world, and he was a huge, huge asshole, asshole. but, well, he was interesting at least, you know, he, he didn't bore me to tears every time he was on the page, so that's really the only thing I have to say about this character cast. Actually, that's a lie. The villain is kinda interesting. You know, his name is Thorn. he's just this magical sorcerer who managed to get all the forces of the wild behind him, and now he's going out and conquering stuff, and... I mean, he's not an amazing character, but... He had some personality to him, and he felt like a genuine threat, so... I'll, I'll, give, I'll give him that much. So, that, that's about all I have to say. Th this book was... It had a lot of potential, but it felt like it was wasting most of it, and I mean, considering how long my to-read list is, I don't want to waste too much more time trying to get through another 200 pages or so of this, so uh, I, don't I don't recommend this, really, unless you're super, super into, like, a heroic fantasy, epic fantasy hybrid, which doesn't quite mesh, I don't think, but maybe you'll feel differently. Uh, other than that, I can't really recommend it to too many people. Uh, well, no, that's it. Super huge thanks to Christopher Hawkin, Des Brennan, Joseph Pendergraft, and all of my other patrons. If you could please check out my page and see, maybe you might want to donate, who knows. Uh, and also subscribe and like and comment and all that other, you know, you know how it goes.